Tickets ready, lunch packed, camera loaded for a trip down the shipping lanes of nostalgia. A last cruise aboard the Manxman, the last steam ferry to sail from Liverpool. The great passenger liners used to queue at the pierhead. Today, only the Manxman has that touch of pre-war style. She's an enthusiast dream. Even those for whom steam is nothing more than a wistful sigh on the lips of their parents have been bought a commemorative ticket for the memory of a lifetime. They've come hot foot from all over the country for one of the real travel experiences. All aboard and Isle of Man, here we come. Breathe in the sights and sounds of the Mersey. For David Slater, chairman of the Manxman Preservation Society, it's a journey awash with memories from his childhood. I think one of the most interesting uh, memories is the leaving a port like Fleetwood and watching train loads upon train loads of people arriving from the East Lancashire towns, uh, disembarking with tatty suitcases, diving onto the boat and setting off for a week's holiday uh, over on the island, uh, hanging over the, the rail, watching the, the mainland slip uh, slowly into the distance. It was as if, uh, as if they were leaving all their cares behind them and, and setting off to this magic isle in the sun somewhere. wasn't unknown to get upwards of 2,000 or more people on board these boats when they were in the heyday. As a child, one obviously has a total different concept and perspective than one does as an adult. And I remember in the early days when I travelled to the island, arriving at Fleetwood with my father and viewing the, this what seemed to be this ginormous boat looming up from the quayside coming onto it and, and thought of looking for all these cubby holes and the nooks and crannies that one could explore. The first regular passenger service to the Isle of Man began in 1850 when a group of Manx businessmen put their heads together and decided to buy their own vessel for the island. She was called the Mona's Isle and she cost £7,200. Well, the Manxman is the 50th in a long line of great vessels owned by the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company, a magnificent example of pre-war shipping architecture. Except that she was built in 1955, and in a sense, almost as soon as she came into service, she was out of date. But enthusiasts love her. She may be out of her depth, yet she stylishly graces the open sea in a way no modern ship can. This boat is the, the last of her line. It's the last, what we could call classic, packet steamer uh, afloat anywhere in European waters. We're never ever going to see the like of a vessel like this uh, afloat again or being constructed again. The whole pattern of sea travel has changed so immensely. Um, air travel has, has taken over by and large uh, from, the, from the ship. Um, these boats were built in days when people went to sea and uh, sea travel was the, the, the prime means of getting people backwards and forwards uh, between continents. And they were fitted out to accommodate the comfort of the passenger. More like the Great Atlantic liners almost. But precisely. You could really say that, that, that um, short of her size, she is more like a mini Cunarda. Well, David, we're up in the wheelhouse now. What are the features that make this ferry different from a modern one? Well, uh, the wheelhouse itself, this is a separate part of the bridge structure. We have the old-fashioned wooden wheel here, whereas the modern car ferry t tends to have a, a more mechanised control system of the, uh, the steering system. Uh, the wheel tends to be much smaller, in fact very little larger than a, a modern car wheel. As you can see by this, uh, this wheel, it's a very substantial wheel. It has to be to cope with the weather conditions. The classic ship's wheel. The classic fact. ship's wheel, yeah. exactly. What about all the brass work? Oh, yes, I mean, this, this, this is, is marvellous. I'd hate to be the person who has to clean it all, uh, but as you can see, it's, it's kept in, in beautiful condition. We have the, the binnacle uh, in front of the wheel. Uh, on the bridge itself, we have the, the telegraphs, the engine telegraphs. Most modern shipping, of course, has a direct uh, engine control straight off the bridge, uh, usually little more than a, a short stick. 
So all these things have disappeared? All these things have all but disappeared on, on the modern ship of today, yes.